This is Lynn Salvador, head of Bureau Security. I'm making a formal security order due to the incident in April, case number 21HQ593. Improper use of the jukebox altered item led to two fatalities. We believe a pair of agents used the jukebox to travel to the quarry threshold and engage in <laughs> inappropriate workplace behavior. An expedition team found them decomposing at the formation's base a week later. At least we found out the jukebox doesn't bring corpses back when the song ends. I'm having the jukebox placed in a secure location in the executive sector. It should never have been accessible to low clearance staff in the first place. The new location security and proximity to a high traffic area will prevent misuse while still allowing for expedition teams to access it when required. See me for any further details. <laughs> a couple used it to get away and fuck. That's great. Are you relaxing or are you dead? Second, there seems to be a lot more to look at here. No, it's happening. After all these years, Dylan is here. Oh, but am I too late? How is he? I need to know. He's not here. He's clearly been affected oh. by the hiss, but it's different than any other manifestation we've recorded. Maybe what makes you so special is genetic. He was a prime candidate. Or maybe it's Polaris protecting him, something else affecting the situation. I need to run tests. He seems more in control, more present. I want to see him. He's the bad guy. My brother. Or is he? Of course. Now, Marshall set up an HRA warded cage to contain him. It's on the upper floor, up the stairs. Okay, I need to go. Jesse. Be careful. Can I talk to her some more? Do you have, I have questions? I have so many questions. Hi, Jesse. Okay. I should be going. Enjoy your data. Oh, I will. Okay, so we gotta go find him upstairs. Probably it right. This is it. Holy shit. Talk to him. You are a one through time. Shit. The thunder's home distorts you. That's Dylan. Can you hear me? Come on, Dylan. I'm here. I found you. You lost me. You lost control. Do you know who I am? Oh, you know me. Say it. You are Dylan Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. Hmm. Always a good sign. Do you know who you are? Not Dylan. Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm P6. P6. But I'm better now. The hiss made me better. Oh no. Push the fingers through the surface into the wet. You've always been the new you. You want this to be true. Can you stop that? Please. <sighs> Not exactly the reunion I'd hoped for. Shit, no. It feels good to say those words. I want to say them. They sound good. They make me feel good. Oh, Jesus. Don't you want to say them too? No. Fuck off, no. You need to help me get this thing out of his head. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to you. help me. 
Oh, shit. You can't live through the hole in you. We let you in. You've always been here. The only true a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Stop it. Orange peel. Shit. Shit. Orange peel. See you. This is not safe. We found Polaris together with my sister when we were very small. In ordinary. In the desert, through the door opened up by the slide projector. But she didn't help when Trench took me away. She didn't give me any powers. All the powers are my own powers. Hmm. <laughs> she didn't help when they locked me up for years. Dylan, you've lost it. Took a long time for applause. We built you till nothing remains. The air cracks and the truth will march out of you. You are home. The Bureau brought the slide projector back here with me. And the Bureau did what the Bureau does. Hmm. They used it. And they found... They opened the door up to the hiss. That's the only thing I can thank them for. There. There it is. We stopped the Altered World event in Ordinary when we shut down the slide projector. And now the projector's here. Hmm. I'm your worms of tune. You can't stop humming in a dream. Baby, baby, baby. The fuck? It's plastic. So safe. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Funny. I welcomed the hiss. I let it in. To get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Polaris is using you. The Bureau is using you. You are a puppet. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. If we shut off the slide projector, maybe, maybe that will stop the hiss. Your regulations. Maybe it's not too late for my brother. You must see the truth for yourself, Jesse. Sister. The horrible truth about the Bureau. Hmm. The hiss is the better option. Go to the prime candidate program in the containment sector. I have the key card to get you there. You, how'd Someone you get that? Wanted me to have it. Wanted? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this light projector. You can help me. Yes. We can end this. Yes. You are a worm through time. Time. The Can I ask him a question? I don't know what else I'm hoping to find here. Dylan. Can we talk? I'd like to tell you about a dream I had last night. Oh no. Off to a good start. Okay. I'm listening. I was back in ordinary. Before all of this happened. But in the dream, I was alone. It was just me. I was the only child. A girl. Hmm. My name was Jesse Dylan Faden. He never then existed. Then the Bureau came and caught me, brought me back here, locked me up. Have you ever noticed that our names, Jesse, Dylan, they could be girls' names, boys' names, could be anything. <laughs> Don't wow. you find that weird? I find that weird. Sure. What the hell was that? Is he trying to mess with me? Let's see if he has anything else to say. This is, um, fucking strange. Maybe Dylan's still in there. Maybe there's a way to reach him. I'd like to talk to my brother, please. Yes. Dylan? 
Dylan would like to tell you about a dream he had just now. Hmm. This again? I was going to be the new director of this place. I helped you get a job here so that we could be together. You were an office assistant. You'd make coffee and deliver the mail. And there was always plenty of work to do. And it stayed that way. <laughs> forever and ever. It was nice. Really nice. That's debatable. But here's the strange thing. The dream shifted. And none of it was real anymore. It was a game. We were in a game. And it was a fucking boring game. <laughs> but you couldn't stop playing. This is familiar. And then it shifted again. Or, or maybe it was another dream already. Or, or maybe I'm just confusing them. But in this other dream, it was more like a musical. This is an ordinary song about an ordinary girl from an ordinary town. It's the ordinary story. She worked an ordinary job in an ordinary office. This is fucking something, something, something. Reminds that's me of Reese. All I can remember of that dream. Maybe that's for the best. I kind of want to keep talking to him. Maybe I can learn more about the hiss from him. Can we talk? I just had an interesting dream. Oh. oh shit. That's fascinating, but let's talk about the hiss for a change, yeah? This dream was about the hiss. Uh that's what I'm gonna get. In my dream, the hiss had broken free of this prison, this house. I'd set it free. And the president himself was there to welcome us. President? He was the first one to take the hiss in. Spread the word. At first, many people thought it was horrifying. That he was horrifying. But also, many people who heard his words wanted to welcome the hiss in. And slowly, more and more of them came around until the whole world was brought together by the hiss. It was wonderful. Hmm. Okay, thanks for sharing that. For the record, that will never happen. Not as long as I'm alive. I want to do it one more time. Maybe I'm just here to punish myself. Yep. Any new dreams you'd like to share, Dylan? I'm glad you asked, sister. This dream, like all dreams now, felt very real. Like reality. And reality now feels like a dream. Maybe it's all a dream. Maybe it's all real dream where my brother endlessly tells me about his dreams <laughs> I was in a Meta. dark place and there was a dark man there his name was Mr. Door and he told me that there are many worlds side by side on top of each other some inside of others in one world there was a writer who wrote a story about a cop Huh. In another world, the cop was real. Dor said he himself was in all of them at the same time, endlessly shifting between them. I asked him how I could reach these worlds. I wanted to bring the hiss there. But he didn't want to help me. He didn't like the idea. What did he know? 
I'm not wild about the idea myself. Through time, the thunders hold the spirits you. I'm just so curious. Here we go again. Once more with feeling. Let me guess. You want to tell me about your dream? Yes. Yes. In fact, I'm having a dream right now. Mm. Oh. That's new. In this dream, I'm standing in the corner watching Jesse and Dylan talk about this very dream. This very dream. He said just now. <laughs> and repeated it again now. I'm standing there and watching and that's all I can do. It's as if I'm trapped there. We looked that way. And that's all I have to say about that dream. Okay, okay, Dylan. That's good. Yeah, it's not fucking weird. Is he still in there? Or is this the hiss playing mind games? I don't know. Well, well. Guys, gotta give me a thing here, like you want. All right, let's go. Dylan is fucking gone. Apparently, the director restored HRA production. They're already getting other. I don't think I ever told you this, but I was actually on the path to being a ranger once. Did the whole boot camp thing. Even got rookie status. Anyway, okay. not the point. My own ranger squad was a great bunch. There was six plus me. Remus, Hazard, Cho, Guy, Hepton, Stone, and Thompson. They were supposed to get back from an expedition yesterday. We had beers and wings planned. Problem is, they weren't here when Darling handed out the HRAs. Then they had nothing protecting them from the hiss. You see, they prepped for the worst, but I think that we're already past that. We all wore these pouches around our neck. And I really don't want the hiss to get them. Could you find them for me? Uh, the squad would have come back through maintenance, but they probably spread out from there. I'll keep an eye out for them, Arish. And I won't let them stay his. All right. I have to go. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. Remember, we got this. Okay. Gonna go back to fridge duty. See if we can't help this poor bastard. Am I in the wrong spot? What can I do? Oh, you're back. Oh, thank you, thank you. If, if I look away, I don't know what this thing will do. You have to get me out of here. <laughs> the door can only be opened by the Panopticon supervisor. That's Langston, if he's still around. Langston. Yeah, I know him. I'll go ask him how to get you out. Please hurry. My eyes. They can't. They can't. Hey, calm down. Just focus. What's your name? Focus. Right. My, my, my name's Philip. And I think I can hold on for a bit. It's just my eyes. My eyes hurt so much. Just hang on, Philip. Whew. With links to them all. Oh, oh, oh. What? What is the bag? <laughs> I'm not allowed to go outside anymore. <laughs> 